So AMD just recently announced prices for their highly anticipated Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs that they unveiled at CES 2023. I'll be honest, I'm quite excited for these CPUs because they're a welcome addition to what was already a pretty competitive CPU market, and the prices line up with where I had expected them to. Well, sort of, and there are some caveats that I wanted to discuss, so let's talk about that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Yesterday, AMD posted a video on their YouTube channel where they announced official prices for their upcoming Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs. Now, you can take this video as sort of an extension to my initial impressions video I made back when the CPUs were unveiled during CES 2023. I'll have a link to it in the video description. In that video, I talked about the benchmarks AMD showcased and gave my reasoning as to why I found them doubtful and also why I think the CPUs may not be as fast as a lot of people are thinking they are. So for this video, my main focus will be on pricing, but we'll touch upon the performance aspect here and there. With that said, let's just dive right into it. So the three CPUs AMD announced were the 7800X3D, 7900X3D, and the 7950X3D. The 7800X3D will launch with an MSRP of 449, the 7900X will launch at 599, and the 7950X will launch at 699. I had anticipated that AMD would either price these CPUs higher than what the original 7000 series launched for, or they would slot them in at the same prices as the original models and drop the prices on those, though it seems like what they have done here is a combination of the two. One of these parts, however, I'll tell you right off the bat, to simply just ignore, and AMD have intentionally set up the pricing scheme in order to sell or upsell the part they want people to actually buy. Starting with the 7800X3D, this CPU is priced at where I'd expected it would be. AMD knows this CPU is going to be their best seller in the 7000X3D lineup because for gaming, an 8-core CPU seems to be the sweet spot right now. Currently, we don't have third-party reviews, but I can say without a doubt that this 7800X3D will perform just as good, if not better than the higher-end 7 1000 3D variants. In my last video, I had actually pointed out how some reviewers had shown the 7700X to be faster than the 7900X and 7950X because it doesn't have to deal with the latency of juggling tasks and information between CCDs. The game just doesn't have to worry about that because there is no other CCD it has to pass info, info to, thus there is no latency issue there. And with the 7900X and 7950X, things become more complex because those CPUs only have the vCache on one die, so AMD will have to work with Microsoft to optimize the scheduler so the CPU can know when to prioritize the vCache die or when to target the die with higher clocks. As for a release date, AMD have decided that they will be pushing out the release of the 7800X3D all the way to April 6, 2023, and this is simply because they want to capitalize on the fans who might get desperate and pay extra money for the Ryzen 9 3D SKUs, those CPUs are actually going to come out earlier. If all those CPUs came out together, then the 7800X3D would sell out. Remember, the primary target for these 3D CPUs are gamers, and they will prioritize the 8-core model. By pushing out the 7800X3D, they're letting the 7900X3D and 7950X3D have the spotlight for a little over a month, but I think this gamble isn't going to pay off for them. Right now, because of their motherboard situation, Zen 4 hasn't even been selling well, hence the quick price cuts and the release of the non-X parts. And due to everything that's going on right now in the world, people just don't have a lot of buying power, so I think a lot of people will just choose to wait it out who are interested in these X3D CPUs from the 7000 series. Circling back to pricing, at 449 while I think it's fair, I feel like AMD could have done better had they priced the CPU at 399 it would have just made the 7800X3D way more competitive. And there are two reasons for that. Right now on Newegg, you can find a Ryzen 9 7900X on sale for $443. So you can sacrifice some gaming performance, but you'll end up with a CPU with faster multi-core performance. Alternatively, you can even save some money and get a 13700KF for $400 on a cheap cheaper motherboard and even use DDR4. And I personally think based on the numbers that I've seen that the 7800X3D won't be that much faster than a fully tuned Raptor Lake CPU. There will be some games where the 7800X3D will be ahead and there will be some cases where Raptor Lake will be ahead. We'll find out once these CPUs land in the hands of reviewers and I'm hoping there will be some reviewers out there that just don't use out of the box configurations and actually take the time to tune their review systems. I actually have a video coming in the near future discussing this. Moving on and we have the Ryzen 9 7900 
900X 3D, and this CPU does not impress me one bit. This is a CPU that I'll say you guys should just ignore. At 599, it's priced way too closely to the 16 core 7950X 3D, and perhaps this could just be a marketing tactic that AMD is using. The all too common upsell tactic that we're very familiar with from the GPU market, e.g. 4080 and 4090, 7900 XT and 7900 XTX. At this segment, I feel like most buyers are just going to say screw it, I'll pay the extra $100 if it means I'll get 4 more cores and get the best of the best processor that AMD has to offer. Go back and watch my previous video on the 7000 x 3 d series. I'm not saying they're going to be terrible, but I just feel like they're not going to have that same sort of large uplift in gaming performance as what we saw with the 5800X3D versus vanilla Zen 3. The 7900X is actually a better buy in my opinion, it won't be that far behind a 7900X3D in gaming, but will be much better in multi-core performance due to its higher clocks and higher TDP, and it's like $150 cheaper. Or again, you could just get a 13700K, or you can even find a 13900K for the same price. You'll get better multi-core performance and about the same gaming performance. So the 7900X, I feel like should have been $550 at most. At $599, I'm sorry to say this chip is DOA. Then we have the 7950X 3D. I'm glad that AMD decided to price this part at $699, which is the original price point the 7950X had launched at. This chip will sell simply because it's one of the best multi-core processors that will be on the market and will offer the best gaming performance. It has that flagship appeal, right? So like how the 4090 doesn't necessarily offer the best bang for the buck, but people will buy it simply because it's the best. Same thing with the 13900K and 13900KS. Again, we'll just have to wait for benchmarks, but I think this chip, the 7800X 3D, a tuned 13900K or 13700K, will all kind of just sit there at the top together, and it'll really just come down to the individual's budget, availability, personal preference, and also how much they're willing to tune their system. One of the great advantages these X3D CPUs will have, which will offset a lot of their higher costs, is that the user won't have to get fast RAM and you won't need a top tier motherboard. If you're looking at building a system or upgrading to one of these new 7000 X 3D CPUs, just find the cheapest AM5 motherboard you can get your hands on and pair it with some cheap DDR5 memory. Speaking of DDR5 memory, since we're on that subject, I thought we might as well just do a quick pricing update because prices have come down considerably. Like right now over on Amazon you can pick up this Patriot Viper DDR5 6200 kit for just $149. A kit like this when Ryzen 7000 came out would have cost you double the price. Or you could go with something even cheaper and find a kit in the low 100s. It really doesn't matter. The thing is, in the past we've seen that a CPU with 3D vCache doesn't care about memory scaling and that's most likely going to be the same for the Zen 4 based 3D CPUs. Along with that, because these chips aren't really overclockable and you're not going to be tuning RAM, you can just find a cheap B650 board or wait for one of those cheap A620 boards. Since these CPUs have a lower power draw requirement, you're not going to need a board with a hefty VRM. So if you're someone who's looking for a CPU where you can just cheap out on everything else, and you don't really have to tune, then these X3D CPUs should be your go-to option. So that essentially covers everything I wanted to talk about when it comes to the pricing of the Ryzen 7000 X3D CPUs. It's going to be an interesting situation because now AMD is not just competing with Intel, but they're also competing with themselves. Well, they technically already were with the 5800 X3D, but now they're going to be competing with the 7000 series. I personally think going forward, they should just shift the SKUs down. So Ryzen 3 should start at 6 cores, Ryzen 5 should start at 8 cores, Ryzen 7s should be 12 cores, and keep the Ryzen 9s at 16 cores. This should help alleviate that multi-core advantage that Intel has on them. They're technically already doing that considering we have an 8-core CPU in the i5 price segment, they just haven't made it official yet. I also think that maybe perhaps saturating the market with all these SKUs may not be the best idea. I think going forward they should also just release uh, some SKUs with just the 3 dv cache. Uh, keep the higher end parts with uh, vCache and then some without vCache because I know there are going to be some buyers in that segment who will prioritize multi-core performance rather than gaming. But I think for the rest of the SKUs, they should honestly just come with vCache from the get-go. So I'm actually quite excited for the reviews that the CPUs will get. I'm hoping that somehow they do end up providing an uplift on average that will be similar to what we saw with the 5800X3D, but I'll keep my expectations to around 10% and go from there. But I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Let me know what you guys think about the pricing on the 7000X3D CPUs.
If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.